It is a true pleasure to be here tonight with the, at the, with the National Braille Press Friends and Angels to talk about one of my passions. One of the things that I was so excited about was the whole bidding or the, on um, the Braille Book Club. I have six kids, as uh, they told you. <laughs> and when my oldest children were small, I needed to read to them, and so I had to Braille all the books so they'd have the pictures and the text, and I'd have the Braille. And then the Braille Book Club came in, and I bought every book that they had for years and years, and I have a tremendous library of that at home, so that I could read to my children. It was so critically important that I could not only read to them, but I could teach them to read. And I did a lot of, of supplementing their, their schoolwork with those, those Twin Vision um, print Braille books so that I could, uh, I could be in the forefront of making darn sure that those kids learn how to read. They are readers today, every one of them, amazingly, and they are also professionals. And I think it's all got a lot to do with the fact that I could give them early literacy. So thank you so much for your support of that program. <laughs> My interest in Braille does go back to second grade. When I was able to stop struggling to read print and begin reading Braille with comfort, speed, and comprehension. It made a tremendous difference in my life even then. When I was in first grade, my teacher thought I was retarded. When I was in second grade, they decided maybe I was blind. <laughs> Amazed. <laughs> um, so they sat me down the hall to learn to read Braille. And by about February, I was reading really well enough that they decided that I ought to be in third grade. So they promoted me in the middle of the year, and it was because suddenly I could read. I did not have to press my nose, we've heard about that, um, <laughs> and my glasses to the page and with, you know, painstakingly decipher what I could see there. I didn't have to stop when I got that pounding headache from it or just was too tired to go on. Instead, I began to really read with speed, with comprehension, and joy. And I still am able to read with speed, comprehension, and joy, even though that vision that I used to have and used to struggle so hard with is long gone. I learned to read on hard copy Braille. And hard copy Braille really hasn't changed much over the past, well, 50 some years. And maybe that's part of the reason that, to a large extent, it has been left behind in our education system. But nothing has stepped up to match it when it comes to true and total literacy for people who are blind or severely visually impaired. The possibilities for Braille, however, have really changed with the introduction of electronic Braille. Last June, um, I organized with Perkins and NLS what we called the Braille Summit. And, and National Braille Press was, uh, joined us in that effort, and we heard from over 100 people, each of whom has a stake in the future of Braille. And they told us several things. They told us that we need a low-cost, reliable, refreshable Braille display, and that it should be available to every Braille reader. It shouldn't be just for the elite. And they recommended that NLS should provide that same Braille display through the same kinds of mechanisms that we use to provide the digital talking book machines. Now they also said that Braille should not be the medium of last resort for people, children particularly, who are severely visually impaired. It shouldn't be where they go when everything else fails. Instead, Braille should be actively and effectively promoted to the public, to parents, to teachers, and to students as a positive, practical, and completely acceptable literacy medium. They recommended more up-to-date and effective training material for Braille learners. They wanted new and faster ways to convert files into formatted Braille. They wanted more tactiles so they could look at maps and drawings and that sort of thing. And they talked about hard copy Braille 
as something that perhaps could be pro provided on demand. Now these themes aren't new to me, but they are, did reinforce what I already believed, and they resonated throughout that conference, and we are going to use them to provide the roadmap for NLS throughout and throughout the network of stakeholders as we move forward with Braille. NLS has, in fact, taken the first tentative steps on this road by joining a worldwide effort to find new, cheaper, and effective technology for refreshable Braille displays. I have pledged that when such a technology is developed and proven, and the price comes down to the price point that we can, we can reasonably afford, we as a nation, I will do everything in my power to introduce a Braille e-reader to the NLS network so that every Braille reader in the United States can have one and use electronic Braille. We are re-examining our traditional approaches to Braille and tactile production at NLS. We're looking for innovations that will meet the changing needs and the changing wants of our patrons. We are hoping and almost ready to hire a Braille specialist to help spearhead these efforts. And we believe that by making Braille more easily acquired, more portable, more flexible, and more available ubiquitously, that we at NLS can do our part to bring Braille back to its rightful place as the legitimate literacy medium for people who are blind or visually impaired. We at NLS look forward to continuing our partnership with the National Braille Press as we work together to bring Braille into the 21st century and as we bring literacy back to blind Americans.